Welcome, and thanks for joining us for another episode of the Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host, and the goal today is to save you from a future late night run to a drugstore. Let me set a scene. It's about nine o'clock, and all of a sudden, someone in your house feels terrible. It could be a throbbing headache, or a nasty cough, or, or red and itchy eyes. Maybe it's all three. Bottom line, you need to find relief. Keeping a well-stocked medicine cabinet is key to address the headaches that life throws at you and your family. So what should absolutely, positively be in there? That's what we're going to find out today with family medicine physician Neha Vias. Dr. Vias is one of the many experts at Cleveland Clinic who pops into the podcast to share health information that you can use and trust. So get a pen and let's get that medicine cabinet shopping list together. Dr. Vias, thank you so much for being with us here today. Love having you with us. Thank you so much for having me here today, John. I know when we were talking earlier, you said that one of the things that you really love about your practice is how you get to work with the entire family. Uh, tell us a little bit about why that's such a, a big thing for you. Thank you so much. Yes, I really enjoy being part of the whole family. I think getting to know everybody in the family gives me a better concept of of what the healthcare needs are for for each individual. And it's also nice being on the front lines of health. And, you know, when you have a good, healthy family, you have a good, healthy individuals. I, I think it kind of goes hand in hand. Definitely, definitely. Well, today we're going right to those front lines of, of family health care, which with uh, how to stock your medicine cabinet. Um, I know when we were talking earlier, you kind of broke it down into, into seven pretty distinct categories. So let's kind of jump right in there in, in the first, the, the big one, uh, which is uh, pain relievers. Yes, indeed. Um, so two of the ones that I generally ha- recommend are ibuprofen, which is commonly known as Advil, and acetaminophen, which is commonly known as Tylenol. Okay. What's the difference between the two of those? Well, that's a really good question. Ibuprofen and acetaminophen come in different categories of of medicine. So ibuprofen generally is in a category called NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. That also includes another medicine known as naproxen or uh, Aleve. And then then as far as the aspirin then, um, how is that different from that? Uh, actually, it's also in the same category of drugs. We don't really use it much as a pain medicine as we do the Advil or the Aleve because we generally use it in our patients with certain heart conditions instead. And aspirin's not really good for children. So we try to make sure that if we do have it in our mes- medicine cabinet, we know how to use it properly. I was going to ask, are, are there specific uh, pain relievers you should use for children? We generally like to stay with either acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, or ibuprofen, which is the Advil. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Um, all right. Moving on uh, with, our, with our shopping list here, uh, muscle pains, something that we all deal with when we do a little too much yard work or work out a little too hard. Uh, what should we be looking for there? Well, there's two I like to recommend, and one is called diclofenac, which is kind of a newcomer to this this market. And it's also known as Voltaren gel. Now, the thing about it is it's also an NSAID. So you kind of have to be careful when you take it. And you might want to talk to your doctor before you start to use it. Okay. And and what um, what other, uh, you said there were two things. What was, what was the other one? Yeah. And, and the one that's easier to use and people use a lot more frequently is um, something called uh, Thermacare or Salon Pass. They are the medicines in there are generally well tolerated by everybody. And so you can use them a little bit more generously than you can the other one. And that comes in a patch form. That's what I was going to ask. Those are like the patches that you can put on. It just kind of gives you a little relief when those joints are aching. Yes, indeed. The third category I know that you had brought up were allergies, something uh, so many people deal with during various times of the year. Um, what's the go-tos for that? Well, the category of, of medicines I like to recommend um, are in our Claritin or Allegra or Zyrtec. They're also known as loratadine or fexofenadine or um, cetirizine. Those are mouthfuls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. And there's a new one called desloratadine, also known as Clarinex, that also 
is in the same category. So those, I take it, are key to have around just for when, for, for what types of situations? Yeah, those are great to have around if you have those seasonal allergies or right as you're starting to develop a respiratory infection and you have that runny nose or, or um, the sneezing or the itchy, watery eyes. You don't need to have all of those. You probably just need to have one of those in your medicine cabinet. Now, this is a silly question. I know there's, are, are they, do people respond to all those different brands a little differently? Uh, or, you know, so do you, should you, maybe you try one and then try another if, if it's not working quite well? That's a great question. And it really depends. It does seem, uh, even though there's no evidence to support this, it does seem that after a while, your body may get used to it and you might have to switch to another one in that same category of drugs. Wonderful advice. So moving on, and this is a, a category that I know uh, people always are worried about, and it would be GI issues. Um, what do we need to find relief? Well, for the heartburn, my, one of the, my go-tos is famotidine, also known as Pepsid. It's a good general heartburn medicine. Um, now, if you can't take a pill, there's also the um, antacids that you can use as well. Uh, calcium carbonate, also known as Tums. And I think of GI issues, we've been at the top part there. Um, they also, you have some issues a little lower down too. Yes, indeed. And, and, if, and if you're a little stopped up, you, you take one thing. If you have the runs, you kind of want to take another one. <laughs> so, so what should we have on hand for each one of those? All right. Well, if you tend towards constipation, it might be a good idea to have something called polyethylene glycol or Miralax. Um, you can use a cap full of this powder in your drink of choice in the morning, and that'll help get you going. All right. And on the other end. And on, and on the other hand, um, there's a, a pill, which also comes in a chewable form. It's called loperamide or Imodian, is Imodium, which is the brand name. And that helps kind of um, stop you up a little bit when you've got the runs. All right. These are always such uncomfortable things to talk about, but I think that's part of being a, being a family doctor. This is, these are the sort of questions you get, I imagine. We do emphasize a lot of stomach ailments in family medicine, indeed. <laughs> no secret here. <laughs> All right. Um, and then is there like one that just kind of like a, a catch all for all those sort of issues? Yes, indeed. And if you kind of have to pick one, then a, a one to go to is um, something called bismuth, or also known as Pepto, Pepto-Bismol. It comes in a pill form and also comes in a liquid form. I find the pills to be very helpful if you're on the go and just want to have a little bit of extra insurance for something. It's always a good idea, especially if you're traveling or something like that, just to have that little safeguard. Yes, uh, moving on um, through our list here, uh, the itching, allergy sort of stuff. Um, what should you have on hand? Yes, for those you know summer days when you've been outside too much and the mosquitoes find you attractive, it's great to have something called hydrocortisone cream on hand or Cordaid. It comes in a in a cream form, and you can rub it on those areas which are red and itchy, and um, that'll help help you for a little while. Uh, I use that all the time. I got to tell you, the mosquitoes absolutely feast on me. And uh, I'm, I'm one of those. I must be delicious. <laughs> yes, you must have that particular scent that the mosquitoes love. All right. Uh, anything else in that category or just kind of a, a topical cream? Yeah, actually, there is another medicine that can be used both as an antihistamine and as an anti-itch medicine. Uh, the name of it is diphenhydramine. We commonly know it as Benadryl. Now, the thing about that is it does make you a little sleepy if you take it in pill form, so you want to be careful. It also comes in the in a cream form that you can use in addition to hydrocortisone to help you with those bug bites. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And I love how you've broken these down. It makes it so easy as far as to categorize them. Um, so the next one is respiratory, which is always something. Actually, it's something I'm dealing with right now, which is why I feel a little scratchy and, and everything else today. Um, what do we? What should we always have around just in case that kind of comes up? And that's a big category, John, and there's quite a number of them in there. So let's start, for instance, with a cough. And there's, there's two types of medicines that you can use for a cough. You can use something that'll suppress your cough, and you can use something that helps you cough it up. So there are cough suppressants, are dextromethorphan, such as robitussin. 
and the expectorants are guaifenesin, such as mucinix. And believe it or not, they have combinations of those two as well. You know, I always wonder that when you look at those, like, why would you want to do one versus the other? And and it just, it, it always, I was always curious about that. That's a, that's a really good question. And it really just depends on the way you're feeling. For some people, they feel like they if they could get their stuff up, they would feel better. So they would want to take an expectorant. But at night, you certainly want don't want to cough all the way throughout the night because that would keep you up. That would be a good time to take a suppressant to help get you some sleep at night. Great tips. Because I always, you look at both of them there when you're shopping, and you're like, I- I'm not sure which one I need. So it sounds like they both have a role depending on the time of day and what you're doing. They do indeed. What else? You said it's a big category. So what else should we make room for on the cart? In addition to expectorants and uh, suppressants, you also have just the good old fashioned cough drops and cough sprays, which may be helpful for you even right now. Right, John? <laughs> I'm thinking I could use it. So <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, all right. And then I, I know the one thing you were talking about, which I love that you had on the list was just plain old honey. Yes, indeed. Now, some of these medicines aren't really safe for children, but children can benefit from a little bit of honey, natural honey, to help as a cough medicine. But before you give your child honey, be sure to talk to your doctor to make sure it's safe to do so. Okay. Is there an age? Because I've always heard that there's an age where your children should not have honey. Where is the line for that? Yes. So you should never, ever give your child honey if they're under the age of one, but you should most definitely talk to your doctor before you give them honey under the age of two. All right. And then the last category that you had brought up um, is the thing that always happens, kind of the the boo-boo category, uh, the injuries. So um, what sort of stuff should you make sure you kind of always have at the go in case somebody somebody scrapes something up? Well, if, if it's anything like my family, I had two very active children. That meant that I had a steady supply of adhesive bandages on hand. <laughs> Always, definitely. Yes. Bandages are obviously great. What other sort of things should you have around? Well, they actually make liquid bandages, which are really good for those cuts that um, are somewhat annoying and don't seem to hold very well with the adhesive bandages. They seem to hold up under water much better than the adhesive bandages. So I always like to have a little bottle of liquid bandage bandage uh, around. Okay. All right. And I take it plenty of alcohol waves just to keep everything clean. Yes, indeed. That seems to be a general go-to disinfectant. So let me ask you this. Um, How often should you go through your cabinet just to make sure you're current or, or things just aren't way out of date? That's a great question. And I generally like to do inventory every six months. So kind of seasonally, I guess, because it seems like there's different medicines you use at different times of year. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You can rotate them. The ones that you need in certain seasons, you can put in the front and the other ones you can kind of throw in the back. All right. So let me ask you this, because I know I just like, I've gone through mine and every once in a while you pull something out and you're like, I cannot believe how old this is. Um, (laughs) are, Are those harmful to take? That's a really great question. If you're really in a pinch and you're just a few months out, it's probably okay to take, not necessarily a wise idea. Um, if it's a bandage or something like that, it's probably fine. All right. Uh, Dr. Vias, uh, we have covered so much ground. Is there anything that we missed or anything you want to add? Yeah. Um, well, there's another category of medicines in the respiratory that we should probably touch on, and that's the decongestants. And the only reason I wanted to bring it up is because those are the medicines you want to stay away from if you have a heart condition. Uh, wh- what's the concern with those if you have a heart condition? Well, they can actually raise your blood pressure and they're not good for people with certain cardiac conditions. So uh, something to really be pay close attention to and not just reach for it willy nilly if you have a cold. And that medicine is known as Sudafed. All right. Well, that is a definitely a good tip to end on. So um, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, can't wait to have you back. Thank you for having me. Coughs, headaches, and various pains are all part of life. Plenty of over-the-counter medications are available to help you find relief. But for them to work their magic, you need them in the house. So let's get that medicine cabinet together. Till next time, be well.